What's up guys, my name is Joe McGovern and this is JM Cad. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel if you're coming back for more. I really appreciate if you guys could leave a comment and tell me where you're from. I go through all my comments and I'd love to put you up on my board. This board signifies to me as a teacher that I am teaching people across the world, which is super rewarding. So let's not waste any more time, let's get into it. All right, so in fixed update, you're going to type RB dot add force, open parenthesis, movement vector, close parenthesis, and semicolon. Well, what the heck does that mean? And why is there an error on this line? All right, so we need to add a couple more things here. So there are two problems with this movement vector. The first problem is that we're trying to use a vector two, which is just X comma Y on that flat plane. X is going to be your left and right, and Z is going to be your forward backward. But we really need to use a vector 3, which is 0, 0, 0, which is X, Y, Z, because the Y is your up and down in space. We're not going to add any forces in the Y direction because this ball is going to stay on the plane. We still need to tell the script and have the game understand that there is a third value, but it is going to be 0. Now, how do we know that there are three axes? Well, if you go back to your Unity game and you change your view a little bit, you'll see that on the sphere, there is an up and down, there is a left to right and a forward backward. So there are three, X comma Y comma Z. All right, so let's go ahead and fix these problems. So go ahead and type private float movement X semicolon and private float movement Y semicolon. It's private because we don't need to access it from inside the game and we don't need to access it in any other script. Again, where we're putting movement X could say anything, cheeseburger. But you want to be careful. You don't want to name it something that you're not going to understand later on when you're going through your script and reading through where you see something like cheeseburger and you're like, what does that mean again? Whereas RB, obviously, you know, that means rigid body and movement X means, hey, this is the movement of the X value. We can now access these variables inside the on move function. So now you're wondering what float means. OK, well, float is very similar to INT, which stands for integer. Integer is a full number, like one, two, three, four, five. Float means a decimal number, which is much more accurate when you're talking about something like movement, 1.1, 1 1.9999. 1 so it needs to be a float number, that way it's as accurate as possible. Now in the on move function, go ahead and hit two enters, and you're gonna put movement X equals movement vector dot x semicolon and you're also going to put movement x excuse me movement y equals movement vector dot y semicolon so what does this mean well we are defining what is movement y and what is movement x what is cheeseburger movement x the variable is the x value and movement y is the y value of the sphere. Where is it currently positioned? All right, so let's go ahead and fix that second problem. Movement vector was created in the on move function and it was also defined in the on move function body. We said vector two movement vector equals movement value dot get vector two. But since it's only created and defined within this single function, the next function doesn't understand what movement vector means. So let's go ahead and add a space above where we're trying to use this movement vector. So go ahead and type vector three movement equals new vector three open parenthesis movement X comma 0, 0.0 float comma space movement y close parenthesis and semicolon and the last thing we have to do is we just have to change this from saying movement vector to saying movement and you'll see that there is no longer an error so the vector three movement what is that it's the x y and z of the sphere adding force to the rigid body is the movement of the sphere so go ahead and do a control shift s to save your script You'll see that all of these lines are green, which means that there are no errors. And we can then close our script and return back to the Unity editor. All right, so now in the Unity editor, make sure, I don't remember if I said this in any of the past videos so far, 
but make sure that your player controller script, you drag and drop that on player. If it's not on the player, everything you typed is nothing because it's just a script that's just sitting there, not attached to any object or any player. If you now go ahead and hit play and you use the A key, you'll see that the ball moves slowly to the left or the D key moves the ball to the right or the W key moves it forward and the S key moves it backwards. We're making progress. If that's still not working, make sure that on your sphere, player input is checked and that under actions, it says input actions. That's that input actions that we created inside that folder. You can hit the little target here and double click on input actions in order to put that in there. So pressing play will now allow your keyboard input to move the sphere. So how do we speed up the ball if the ball is moving too slow? Let's return back to our script for one more thing. Okay, so above the other variables that we declared, we're gonna add one called public. So above our other variables that we already declared, let's declare a speed variable and let's make it public, which means that we're gonna be able to access it from other scripts if we need to, or more importantly, inside the inspector when we're selected on the sphere. So type public float speed equals zero semicolon. This will give you a line in the inspector that says speed and then it's set to zero to start. We'll be able to change that in a minute to multiply the forces that are on the ball like five or 10. This will make the sphere move faster or slower. Now remember, this is just the variable. We still have to go down in our fixed update and multiply this movement by our speed. Now, once again, control shift S to save. Close your script and return to the Unity editor and hit play. And you'll see now that the sphere does not move. Why? Because when you're selected on the sphere, we now have an area called speed in our script section. The speed is set to zero, which means that it won't move. So if I put something like five there and then I hit play, now when I move, you'll see the speed is moving at a speed multiplication of five. You can put any number you'd like in there. Listen, guys, I know this was a long one. I appreciate you guys sticking with me here throughout the entire thing. There will be about two more parts of this series here, and then we will be done. So once again, if this is helping you guys at all, just subscribe to the channel if you wanna see those other videos, like the video so that it gets sent out into the YouTube abyss so other people see it, and turn on the bell if you wanna get the notifications for when I put those videos up. I really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next one, later.